Hello, welcome to Locked on Sharks, the premier hockey podcast of your favorite team in the Bay Area. And on today's episode, I struggle through the weekend that was as I have no voice and the Sharks played worse than how my voice sounds. So all that and more on today's episode of Locked on Sharks. You're Locked on Sharks, your daily podcast on the San Jose Sharks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, J.D. Young, contributor at Fear the Fin and San Jose Hockey Now. I want to thank you for making Locked On Sharks your first listen. We're free and available wherever you get podcasts. And of course, you can watch this on YouTube as well. And I apologize for not having this out first thing Monday morning. Um, I went to the Dolphins Niners game. My voice is now gone. And uh, I got home later than I expected. So I was going to try to have an episode for you guys normal time. But still wanted to get out my weekend thoughts um, of what happened. You know, so a little bit later today, if you're listening to this on Tuesday, you have a nice little double episode between um, this episode and then uh, we'll have I have Haiti from uh, Locked On NHL Prospects on where we're going to talk about kind of some of the the Sharks OHL and their uh, Jake Furlong in the queue and then we get into some CUDA talk and all that fun stuff. So um, nice little double episode if you're checking that out. So but the Sharks this weekend. Uh, of course, they lose to the Senators uh, by a score of 5-2, to two, and they follow up with a Sunday performance of a loss 6-3 uh, to three to the Buffalo Sabres. And starting to see the cracks of this team continue to form as they just don't have we, – we, we know this team is a little bit more offensive than we expected, but the goaltending that was there at least the beginning of last year – and the defensive effort just aren't there for them to be able to keep up with high powered offenses. And we saw that with the Sens and then we saw that with, with the Sabres and the penalty kill, which was bailing them out for much of the season. So for this year, again, starting to show those cracks of you can't continually rely on your penalty kill to, to bail you out every game. And this is becoming more of more of an issue, right? Um, as great as the, the Sharks' penalty kill has been, at some point they're not going to continue to to be a 90, 92% penalty kill. And we saw that this weekend with the Sabres game. They gave up, you know, three power play goals um, to the Sa- or to the, the Sens, I'm sorry. And then they followed that up on the Sabres game and they give up, you know, a couple power play goals to the Sabres. And these are very good power play teams. And as the Sharks continue to, to play these good, high-quality teams, I know the Sabres and the Sens, that they're working their way through things right now. And, you know, they have a lot of young pieces. But as you play the Vegases of the world and, you know, the Kings and all those other, you know, the Kraken, we saw what happened when the Sharks played the Kraken um, uh, last week or a couple weeks ago where – you play these good teams that have high powered offenses or in very, very good penalty or power plays, you're not going to be able to, to shut those guys down forever. And especially as the Sharks move pieces out, you know, Matt Nieto's, Nick Benito's, et cetera, those type of guys, you can't rely on this penalty kill to, to bail you out of every situation. And we're seeing that start to happen now where, yes, yeah, so the Sharks penalty kill in November was amazing, but to expect them to continue at that same pace, it's it's just not reasonable. It's not it's not fair to them, and it's not fair to um, to the, these players to expect them them to continue that same type of pace um, all season long. So, you know this 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 weekend was seeing the flaws in the penalty kill and then seeing the goaltending, which is you know Aaron Dell had a, a great game against the Leafs, and then. You know, just you're not going to expect Aaron Dell to to continue to perform at that level. And you know, the the Sabers have a very good offense. And I talked about on on the preview show on Friday of how they can score in bunches, and we saw that happen. Um, 
you know, on Sunday as well, especially like that third period, right, where it was, you know, you had the Quinn goal. I know then Lindblom responded, but then Alcazar got the empty netter in, in the second period, right? Pachuca to start the game and start the second period. And then Jeff Skinner a couple minutes later, right? And then Jack Quinn on, on the power play in the second period. And that was all it, it took for the Sharks. They just, they don't have the guys or, or the depth to be able to, to, to continually score four or five goals a night um, to try to win games. So, you know, again, with the, the Sharks team, as we'll get into each game, but it's just, last year the Sharks, they got goaltending, especially the beginning of the season, and things, you know, fell apart, kind of started around this time last year too, right? The goaltending, you know, asking Ryber to kind of bail you out. Aiden Hill was was a good – had a good start for the Sharks. And then around Christmas time, I know we had the the the, the Cuda Sharks last year who were dealing with, with COVID issues, but we start to see kind of this time right after Thanksgiving, right, going into Christmas – that Christmas break where the cracks in the foundation are starting to show for the sharks. And, you know, the, this team is headed towards being, you know, they've, they've lost what eight out of their last 10, right? This, this team is headed towards being one of those bottom five teams um, in the, in the NHL. And I think the sooner that they realize that and the sooner we can all get on with our lives and start enjoying the future and, looking towards a draft class and start talking about trades and all that fun stuff. But yes, tough weekend for the Sharks. Um, They're going to head home. The schedule kind of lightens up here a little bit. There's not as many back-to-backs and, you know, they're, they're going to, they play on Wednesday and then they play on Friday. And then like next week, they have two games as well. So we're going to see their schedule start to lighten up here a little bit and play some a little bit softer teams. But again, you went on the road and you lost three out of four against some, I mean, the Maple Leafs are very good, right? The Canadians are kind of right around where the Sharks are and the Sens and the Sabres are, and the, the Sabres are, are, are much better, but the Sens are kind of right where the Sharks are as well. So yes, tough weekend for the Sharks. Um, you know, like I said, hopefully we can start to uh, move ahead, look ahead to what, the actual future and where this team is actually headed. So before we look back on the Sens game, do want to take a quick break um, and let you guys know about our friends over at um, Athletic Greens. So if you guys want to take care of your gut health, um, you want to have more energy, more a better immune system, but you don't like taking a bunch of pills. That's where athletic greens can come in. They have uh, with one scoop of their AG one powder, you're absorbing 75 high quality vitamins, minerals, whole foods, source, superfoods, probiotics, and aptogens help you start your day. Right. They have a special blend of ingredients that supports your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy recovery and focus aging, everything under the sun. Great thing about it, it's less than three dollars a day, and you're investing in your health, and it's cheaper than a cold brew habit. It's cheaper than going to the store and trying to buy all these pills all at once. Get all one nutritional insurance. First thing you do in the morning, boom, water, shake it up, drink it, and you are good to go. So they're making it really, really easy for you right now. Go to athleticgreens.com slash NHL network. You're going to get one free year of immune supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs, especially this time of year. You're traveling. You don't have to bring the whole thing. Nice little travel packs makes it easy for you. So again, visit athleticgreens.com slash NHL network. Again, athleticgreens.com slash NHL network to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Okay need a drink here so sharks sends saturday night game sharks i did say hurdle was gonna have his two goals uh come out really big you know to to kind of 
after uh, uh, the performance he had against the, the Leafs, he felt like he lost the games for the, the Sharks with that bad turnover. What does Hurdle do? He comes out and he scores two goals in the first period. But then <laughs> the Sharks just couldn't really muster anything else up after that. Um, you know, the, the Matt Benning terrible pass that led to the Claude Giroux goal that, that tied up the game. And then from there, it was just kind of an avalanche for for the uh, for the Sens as they kind of took uh, took possession of this game. So, you know, when like looking at the the, the shot count and everything like that, you could just kind of see as the Sharks, you know, just kind of fell fell behind and fell behind. And even in the third period, the Sens just continually added added to that shot count, added to that shot count. So, um. You know, five on five, the Sens dominated the shot count. Um, shot attempts was 53 to 35 in favor of the Sens. And this is just at five on five in 44, a little over 44 minutes there. Actual shots was 20 to 23 in favor of the Sens. Um, scoring chances was 19 to 16 in favor of the Sens. Um, high danger chances uh, was six to four in, in favor of the Sharks. So we know the Sharks, that's how they like to play. They may not get as many scoring chances but they do get those you know or as many shots but they do get those quality chances with those high danger chances and you know the, the sharks did do that pretty well but um you know looking at at the actual sharks lines and so the lebank hurdle meyer line which has been kind of feasting on on teams all year 12 12 uh time on ice out shot nine or shot attempts was nine to 13 in favor of of the sends actual shots was six to eight um got a goal but also gave up a goal as well had four scoring chances to give up four two high danger chances to one um so seven neutral zone they didn't really get a lot of offensive zone starts in this game uh no line got more than two and we also saw uh nieto couture and bear banoff uh they played 745 eight shot attempts four 16 allowed uh, actual shots was five to four, and then uh, the, that line did produce one high danger, didn't give up any, um, and then kind of the same thing: two, three, and four for the uh, the zone starts. Nick Benito line. So we've seen this Nick Benito line kind of get their lunch taken from them recently, and it continued. Noah Gregor, Nick Benito, Luke Cunning. 840 time on ice at five on five, five shot attempts, gave up 17 um, actual shots on goal was three to eight in favor of the Sens. Scoring chances, three to five in favor of the Sens. High danger, two to three in favor of the Sens. One offensive zone, six neutral zones, six defenses. I know they got the bulk of the defensive zone starts, but we've seen Kotor's line be able to kind of mitigate that. Um, the Benino line is, is, you know, is the faster Nick Sturm can get, <laughs> uh, Nico Sturm, sorry, can get back, the better, you know, poor. The, this line has not been super great. Lindblom, Lawrence Gadovich, uh, 625, seven shot attempts, four or five allowed. Um, actual shots was six, three. So at least their shot attempts were, were, were solid there. Uh, one high danger chance, three scoring chances for that line, and then one, one, and two. So, you know, that third line continues to kind of be an issue for the Sharks as they're, you know, especially if your Hurdle Meyer Couture line is kind of getting worked. And that, that third line is has been an issue for the Sharks for a while now. And I think as soon as Nico Sturm could get back and help kind of turn, you know, solidify that line, and that way you can do something else with Nick Benino, whether it's the fourth line or trade him, but personally, but you know, it, that, that third line has, has continues to be an issue. And that's where teams that can play a solid third line or solid middle six, that's where they've been taking advantage of the sharks. And, you know, I know that that line didn't really give up anything goal wise, but you're just you're setting yourself up for to to fail if you're having to play your entire shift in the defensive zone. 
and then the next guys that have come out and try to work themselves out of that. And that's, that's what's happening when you give up 17 shot attempts. Um, you know, the, the Sens are just going to take shots just to take shots from wherever on the ice. Only good. They're going to take shots when they have good chances. And um, yeah, that that's, that's a tough look for that third line. And you wonder, especially with, with the way Bortolo is playing in, in the AHL. Now he's up to 11 goals this year. Um, he's been playing much, much better, you know, as of like the past couple of weeks, those guys are knocking on the door here. And I know, like I said, I know Nico sturm has been out and with dealing with a concussion at some point, you're going to have to do something. If you're, you're David Quinn um, to try to figure something out, right. To, you can't just, we, we, we fixed the, the, having the one line problem, right. The first, at first it was just a hurdle line that could do anything. Okay, now we got two competent lines, right? The Couture line has been playing much, much better since Barabanov got added to that line, and Matt Nieto's making the most of his opportunities, right? Okay, how long until the third line? You got to do something there with that. So um, before we do get into the Sabres game, talk about what happened in that. Look at some of the numbers in there. <clears throat> Let's take a quick break. Talk to you guys about our friends over at Bet Online. You guys know Bet Online is your number one source for sports betting info, stats, news, and analysis. Get all the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there. From football to basketball to soccer, esports, they've got you covered at betonline.net. If you love sports podcasts, you can find those at Bet Online as well. The fastest and easiest way to get your betting fixed in. So head to their website today or use your mobile device to learn more. Bet Online. Where the game starts, more drink. Sorry, guys. I'm powering through this as best I can. All right, Shark Sabers. Um, we'll start with the positives. Oscar Lindblom, Nick Benito, welcome to the score sheet. Um, it just took like game 27 or whatever to get on the score sheet, but. I know for both those guys, it must be super frustrating to kind of keep kind of grinding and grinding and grinding, and you're you're just not able to get on the score sheet. And we saw last year with Benino, kind of once he scored, like how it really opened things up for him, um, you know. And he ended the season really, really strong with I think he had five goals in the last eight games or or whatever it was. So we know Benino can get hot, um, but you know Lindblom too. Finally, kind of getting the monkey off his back and scoring there. I know the the game was pretty much out of hand by the time he did score, but has to feel good for these guys to actually get some scoring going. But this this game for the Sharks, they just got <laughs> yeah. It was actually, I guess, pretty pretty close. Um, but the this the penalty kill kind of what what did it in for the Sharks, right? You know, looking at the Corsi numbers at five one five was pretty even, but all situations that court that that penalty that power play for the the Sabers, which is a very very good unit because they have a lot of young talented players, um, but they they did a great job of taking advantage of the opportunities that they had, you know, in that game, um, and then the Sharks just. Again, we, we can't continually ask them to on, on this penalty kill, like I said before, you can't you can't just keep giving the teams opportunities. And that's what happened, right? You know, the Sabres were two for four on their power play. And I know the Sharks were one for one, but and people are like, Well, why did the Sharks get more power play? You're not gonna draw power, you're not gonna draw power play opportunities in your defensive zone most of the time. You have to draw those by working in the offensive zone and getting those opportunities, right? controlling the puck that's what leads to more power play opportunities so but for the sharks in this game so shot attempts at uh five on five 48 to 39 so actually it was a little bit closer um than the sends game you know actual shots was 31 to um 26 in favor of the Sens. This is again all five on five scoring chances at 34 to 22. Sabers, even in the third period when they were up, still laying it on the Sharks. 
High danger chances, 13 to 11 in favor of the Sabres. Expected goals for 3.35 to 1.87. So the Sabres, quantity and quality handshake right there. So um, as for the Sharks line forward line, so we saw a little bit of, of change-ups here in this game, especially as trying to kind of generate some more offense. Um Nieto Kotor Barabanov, nine shot attempts to, to eight, so good for them. Um, actual shots, that was four to seven. So ugh, right there. Did give up a goal. Four, they produced uh, seven scoring chances to eight, four high danger chances, uh, four and allowed. And then five offensive zones, six neutral zone, two defensive zone. I know the lines got kind of uh, a little wonky here too as uh, Quinn was trying to generate some offense, but we'll just look at kind of how how guys spent most of their time. Um, Svechnikov, Benino, Cunnan played 9.09. Uh, time on ice, six shot attempts, four, nine given up. Gregor it was a healthy scratch, but he did get hit in the hand in the Sins game as well too, so... Um, four shot attempts, gave up seven actual one did score a goal, but gave up a goal as well. Uh, scoring chances were three to six in favor of the Sabres, two to two high danger chances. And then, uh, three, one and four defenses and starts. So LeBanc, Hurdle and Meyer, 849 time on ice. Um, I know Meyer got shuffled down at, at one point as well too. Um, six shot attempts, gave up eight actual shots was five to five. And one high danger chance gave up three, gave three scoring chances, gave up six. And again, this, especially this, the top of the Sabres, Tage Thompson, that Tage Thompson line is ridiculously good, right? That second line with JJ Paterka, really good. And just the Sharks, just right now, unfortunately, don't have the guys to kind of play with those. So, Lindblom, Lawrence uh, Gadovich, 624, four shot attempts, four gave up five. Actual shots was just two to one in their favor, so that's good. Um, scoring chances one to three, zero to three, and high danger chances. So, Svechikov to get some run with the hurdle line didn't really do much. And then Lindblom, Lawrence, Barabanov got a little bit of run too, had two shot attempts. So, you know, again, defense isn't the defense is, is what it is, right? The goaltending we know with Reimer, who had a little bit of a setback, so we're not even sure when he's going to be available yet. Um, it does sound like Ferraro should be kind of working his way back, and he's gone from week to week to now day to day. So I wouldn't be surprised if we see him at some point this week. Um, maybe not against the Canucks on Wednesday, but maybe the the Ducks game on Friday gives him you know kind of another week to to get ready. So he's been back, kind of skating it and back getting back together. So um, we'll see how they, they go with Dell with, if they keep Dell up or if they're going to have to um, send him back if, if Reimer's available, but with a setback, it sounds like you have some time here, right? You've got a game on Wednesday, a game on uh, a Friday, then you have a game on Tuesday after that. And then it's like a, not till Saturday. So you have kind of a little bit more time between games right now. So see if Reimer can, get back to being James Reimer without having to rush him. So, you know, tough weekend for the Sharks. Is there hell now where they've been playing even worse than they have on the road? So, um, like I said, Canucks game on Wednesday, Ducks game on Friday. So get you guys ready for, for those games. Um, probably a little bit shorter episode right now so I can because my voice is starting to go even worse. So um, make sure you guys are checking out the Lockdown Sports Today podcast. So, They've got you covered with some of the all the biggest stories in sports. You know, you got the some you got the MLB hot stove, right? You got big signings. Hopefully, we get the Aaron Judge to the Giants soon. Please, Judge, please come home. They've got you covered that. They got you covered as um, NFL playoff races are heating up. So make sure you guys go check out the Locked On Sports Today podcast wherever you get podcasts, and of course on YouTube as well. I'm on Twitter at my fry hole. You can follow the show on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Locked on Sharks. You can listen wherever you get podcasts, Apple, Spotify, Amazon Music, Odyssey, all those places. Watch on YouTube. 
Um, be back tomorrow with uh, I did interview this weekend with Haiti um, from the Locked On uh, Locked On Pro- NHL Prospects. So if you guys haven't checked out the Locked On NHL Prospects, I'm sure you guys have become bigger fans of prospects since listening to Locked On Sharks because we just have the future to talk about. So I have him on tomorrow. So make sure you guys check that out, and we'll get you guys ready for that next game on Wednesday. And until then. Bye, friends.